Hi, here in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Schlenk line. Now, the Schlenk line is a centerpiece of an efficient defense against atmospheric intrusion outside the glove box. We call this the double manifold. Now, what you see right now, it is a film hood with the Schlenk line being set up. Now, before you do anything in the film hood, make sure you're wearing a pair of gloves and your safety goggles. Of course, the PPE must be ready on you. Make sure that you're not wearing any forms of jewelry rings, watches, because if you do, and you wear your gloves, it may tear them apart. First up, make sure your hands are clean and dry, and then put on a pair of gloves. This is to prevent you from being contaminated by the chemicals. There are a few parts to the Schlenk line. Now over here, you see the nitrogen source with the knob there. And here you see the centerpiece. The nitrogen source tubing connects to the main double manifold. Now here you see four glass joint stopcock and they should be horizontal at the way before you start any reaction. They can point to the left or point to the right, it doesn't matter as long as they are horizontal. Now here in our lab, we have our own in-house labeling to facilitate the use of the Schlenk line. If the blue marking points upwards, it means that we are having the vacuum connected to the flask. If we have the blue indicator pointing down, that means the flask is being connected to the nitrogen source. But right now, nothing's coming out, nothing's going in because all the glass top cup is set horizontally. And here you see we have got four rubber tubings, which means that we could share the Schlenk line actually between four systems. And on the left hand side, you see that it is connected to a vacuum trap, a cold trap. And here you see a dual flask that contains your liquid nitrogen which is used to cool the vacuum trap. And of course, after you insert the liquid nitrogen into the dual flask, you need to cover the top of the dual flask using a piece of cloth in order to prevent any escape of the liquid nitrogen. The next time when you need to transfer any liquid nitrogen, you have to wear a pair of special gloves. This special pair of gloves is called the cryo gloves. It will give you enhanced protection in case of any spillage against liquid nitrogen. You know it's very cold, right? So if you are handling liquid nitrogen, you have to wear these gloves. Here, I'm not going to show you how do you transfer liquid nitrogen. We'll just proceed straight to the Schlenk line. On the left here, you see there are two sources of water supply. You have to look at them carefully and see which part they are connected to before you turn it on. You see for the top part here, the outlet is not connected to anything. There's no tubing coming out. So if you turn it on, you see the whole film mode being flushed with water. And the bottom part, you see that now there's a orange tubing coming out. So this is where you connect it to the condenser later on. So now you see this film hood, the Schlenk line system is already set up for you. They're all in place. Now you notice that right now the sash is down. And it should always be down when you're conducting any experiments. But here I'm going to leave it up so that you will have a better view of the whole system when I'm going to show you what to do. Just for demonstration purpose, we are going to lift up the sash. Now you see that here is exactly what you saw just now in the film hood previously. Just that now it's already all set up for you. See that now the glass joint again, the stopcock are placed horizontally. And you see this black tubing here is connected to a two net round bottom flask that has your anhydrous solvent. And on the left hand side, you see that the other rubber tubing is connected to the system. Again, it's closed system that connects to the adapter with the condenser. The tubings are connected to the water source and the chemicals are already in place inside the round bottom flask. And here you see the oil bath. And here the liquid nitrogen has already been added. You see that the tower is there to protect the N2 from coming out too quickly. And this part is the air bubbler. You see that now there's an exit outlet. This is to show you whether we have air going in. Now when I say air in this case, it is nitrogen gas. So follow me and I'm going to show you how to switch on the nitrogen gas. So on my right hand, I'm turning the brown knob to turn on the nitrogen gas source, which runs all the way to the Schlenk line. Be very careful. Do not do it very fast. Do it slowly. Be gentle. Just rotate. Rotate gently. As my hand is rotating this, I'm watching the oil bubbler. Watch this. Eyes on the oil. You see? You see? It was a bit too abrupt. 
because the knob was a bit tight so you have to do it very carefully practice a bit more so that the gas will come out smoothly there is another way of doing it first we rotate the glass joint so that nitrogen can go into the tubing and we open the stop cup of the glass joint that connects to the condenser so that later on once we turn on the nitrogen gas it has space to move into the system so here we go one more time this time should be better you see this? bubbles coming out slowly indicating the flow of nitrogen gas now this is a standard oil bubbler it contains mineral oil it is used to monitor the gas evolution or the rate of flow or closing off a reaction vessel from the atmosphere see the nitrogen now runs towards here and to the other side so now we have the nitrogen source going to the inside the whole length line from the tubing into the system and for the right hand side this tubing is connected to the end hydrosolvent right now the end inside the tubing may not be completely dry so what I'm going to do now is to switch off the nitrogen gas first rotate the stopcock and you see now here we have the pump, the vacuum pump that connects the strength line so I'm going to use the vacuum system to remove all the gas from the tubing and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wash my fingers we are going to remove any air from the tubing inside and after that rotate slowly turn it to the level term and give nitrogen to the tubing so now it's running into the black tubing notice that my glass stopcock the seal the solvent is still closed and now vacuum up again and now put it back down to allow nitrogen to go in so here we are doing flushing evacuation and it count to 5 seconds so now we know that this part is all nitrogen and it's very safe we are going to proceed this tubing contains nitrogen only and we can turn on the stopcock open the stopcock so the nitrogen can go into the anhydrous solvent later we're going to transfer this liquid from this tuna RBF into the one on the left hand side and how do we do that? we need to use the cannula cannulation that's a practice you notice I'm holding to a cannula they have two sharp ends Step 1, there are two ends of cannula, sharp as needles, so be careful. And before that, you need to turn on the nitrogen system. Make sure that nitrogen connects to your ration mixture and also the solvent. Now, a cannula, and you insert one end through the rubber septum into the round bottom flask that contains your end nitrous solvent make sure that this needle end is still above the solvent it cannot be totally submerged yet because once you have it your liquid will start to flow due to a difference in pressure now for the other side see that it's very sharp you can see that because now it's connected to nitrogen and coming here all the way through the tubing into the flask and out exit through the needle through the cannula so you can actually feel a bit of gas coming out but please do not touch it, don't hurt your fingers you push through the rubber septum of the left hand side round bottom flask and now it goes in you see that now there's still no transfer yet because the cannula is not submerged into the solvent so later on you will see we will switch off the stopcock of the reaction mixture 
and we're going to use nitrogen gas to force the liquid into the reaction mixture. Okay, now I'm going to take an exit needle, it's just a needle head, pull it, no recoil, and put it to the reaction mixture, flask, septum, put it in. So that now we have an outlet for the gas to come out and do not build up in any pressure inside. You see now, we watch this, and I'm going to submerge the cannula into the anhydrosolvent. Now it is inside, and you can see that liquid is transferring inside. The dripping of this colorless solvent, see my fingers, is going down. Yes, right now we are having the transfer of the anhydrous solvent from the right hand side round bottom flask to the left hand side flask. You see that now the level of the solvent is getting lower and lower. You see these bubbles? Yes, solvent's going in. But this is no magic, it's just science. Difference in pressure, liquid flow from a high pressure to a low pressure. Just have a little patience. Okay, I'm going to do a fast forward here. And you notice that how to level the meniscus of the solvent will decrease quickly. Almost towards the end. Right, till the last couple of drops. And we are almost done. See, almost all are transferred. What we do now is we remove the cannula, okay, we remove the cannula from both sides. I start with the right hand side and then now finish off with the left hand side remove it carefully, put the one side do not throw it away because the lab technician is going to wash it and recycle it, it is expensive we still have the exit outlet needle here so now we put in nitrogen gas to the reaction mixture and have the nitrogen pumping out then now we take off the exit needle okay, remember once you have a needle that's open we need to find the cap the cover to cap it in Okay, it is a hazard, so be very careful not to get harmed and pricked by the needles. I'm looking for it. It's gone somewhere. Aha, uh -huh, got it. So I'm going to cap it back. And after you're done using the needle, you throw it into the broken glass bin. We call it a sharp bin for sharps. Now I return to my film hood. Sometimes, right, because we have we have uh, poked some holes through the rubber septum, there's a bit of cavity, and we use some duct tape, some electrical tape, and cover the top, so that now it's sealed. So we're trying to seal it off. It's to preserve the inner atmosphere. Some people would like to use the paraffin tape, it's also fine. So we look at the two, two knobs which connects to the water condenser. It is the bottom one here that has the tubing that connects to my condenser in the system. Okay, it runs, so I'm going to turn on with my left hand side. You watch this, it goes up. So the condenser is now filled with water. Okay, make sure it's ready. And make sure the switches are on first, check. 
Now I turn on the magnetic stirrer so that now it starts to spin. Alright, rotate it. Always make sure that the level of the liquid in the ratio mixture is above the level of the heating liquid. This is to ensure safety. Now you see a thermostat here. To set the temperature of the thermostat, you hold the set key and the arrows up or down to adjust the numbers to reach a minimum temperature. You see that the number here is being displayed while the set is being held. Always bear in mind that the transfer of liquid using a cannula will only happen if there is a pressure difference. Alright, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learn well and practice. See you.